Welcome to The Next Chapter, a show about how to move your life forward and what comes next. I'm your host, Carrie Pena, co-founder of the Center for Positive Media. Hi, I'm Carrie Pena, and this is the Next Chapter podcast. I am so excited to welcome to the studio today, Daryl Virginia Dennis, the author of Quantum Living, Moving at the Speed of Life. Yes. Your story is so fascinating. You are also a quantum leap coach, yes. a public speaker. Yes. This book, congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Let's start Thank by you. talking about, you know, what is the quantum lifestyle? So quantum is a frequency. So quantum is energy. And so what we're all becoming more conscious of now, all over the world, this is all over the world. This is an evolution of humanity taking place, is to understand that everything is energy. And that, like Einstein said, everything's energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want. You cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. Nikola Tesla, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So those two quotes hit my head at the same time at this one moment. I was doing a meditation and I started to think about, well, wait a second, what does it mean everything is energy? Because if everything is energy, then genius is a frequency. So in Tesla, Nikola Tesla said uh, very brilliantly, it's becoming, it's spreading all over the world and becoming quite famous quote, is that um, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And so when I put those two quotes together, the Einstein and the um, Nikola Tesla quote, something happened in, that in my head was like, well, wait a second, what does everything mean? Because if everything, and they both said everything, and these are geniuses that saw into the future, so maybe they have something to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe we should listen. Yeah, maybe just a tad, <laughs> right? So I thought, okay, so what I, I could ponder this, what everything means, because everything then means that genius is a frequency, not an intelligence capacity, hmm. not a brain design function. That means everyone, every common person on planet Earth has the potential to activate the genius inside of them. This is absolutely possible. It's a frequency. Just like everyone has the potential to be in love with someone. Love is a frequency. Why is the only thing not a frequency is genius when everything else is? Think about it. Compassion, harmony, joy, laughter, you know. How do we tap into this? And oh. you, you coach people. Yes. So yes. if, if someone's listening or watching this and they're fascinated, because everything that you're talking about here is so fascinating, but then I like to talk about practical application. My favorite subject. How do you apply it How on do Monday morning? Exactly. So with everything being frequency, so that's a premise that we operate from. If that's true, then what is the difference in the frequency between joy or judgment? Because when we're judging people or judging ourselves as not good enough or enough or all of that that happens all over the place, when we do that, we lower our frequency. So when we lower our frequency, now we're interacting with other people in our business, in our day, with our friends, with our family, not feeling so good about ourselves because we're judging ourselves, And then we're sending out a frequency that I'm not good enough with my friends. And we wonder, how come I have these conflicts with my relationships? The conflicts are self-inflicted. But people don't know that. They're not really learning about this. But now that Tesla and Einstein have put it in perspective that if everything's frequency, then look at the attitudes you're emitting. Am I emitting a frequency at, at work or with a potential client and say, I have to get this deal because I've got to have this money because I'm running out of money and it's scary. Okay, if we have that, because a lot of people do, but if we have that and when we have that, the person is going to start feeling, well, wait a second, I'm not responsible for your money. I'm here to receive your service. That makes all the difference in the world. So when I'm coaching someone, I do refer to myself as a quantum leap coach. The part that's so astounding about this subject is that I have a, my coaching program is a 20 hour package, if you will. The first time, the fir ask anybody, the first time we correct that attitude and shift into where can you be of value? Because being of value 
is a very high state. In fact, it's the frequency that drives quantum. Mm. As a result of it, the person shifts that attitude. We choose who would you like to work or be with? Who would you prefer? And then how do you reach that person is by being of value to them, not needing them. I love that. How are you contributing? And even right. on a larger scale, right. how am I contrib- contributing to the world, to my yes. community? Chills. To Yes. I love that. Yes. Yeah. What inspired you to write this book? I imagine that you mm-hmm. were doing coaching and speaking and probably yeah. people ask you a million questions about sure, this. Sure, sure. So the speaking um, experience was extraordinary. That started in 2005 in October and uh, went on until the March 2020. And so, and in that time, I just was in front of so many audiences. I love business and I love marketing and sales because it's a part of, it's an activity where we can grow ourselves while being a value to other people. It's the most extraordinary. And then all the wealth just flows in. We don't have to go get it or chase it or need it. Do you know what I mean? So the intention to be a value raises our frequency and it's very cool. Now, all these audiences I've been in were professional people. And the professional people are getting trained very differently. They're getting trained in a way to the point of, if you want to get more money, you need to make more calls on more people. Okay, so, but what is this? I don't necessarily disagree with that. But what's the intent when you're reaching out to each one? Is the intent, I have this product, will you buy it from me? Because I need six today. Or are you meeting with someone to explore what it might look like to be of value to them? And then the world opens up. It's a very big deal. Asking a question of every client is at the first meeting, if I were to be of value to you, what would that look like? Because now they share what matters to them. And then that triggers in me a desire to be of value and to help in that circumstance. And then contributing that, you're now building a partnership of value and the money flows in ways that are quite quantum leaps. Can you talk a little bit about your background? Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna dive in to talk about intuition because I love this subject as well. Um, But I wanna talk a little bit about your background because it's fascinating at Mm -hmm. a very young age, Mm -hmm. you were, how can I say it nicely? Well, I don't like to curse, but you are a butt kicker. Uh, oh. <laughs> you are just one of those women who just gets out there and, as my grandpa used to say, get her done. <laughs> oh, and I love that extra to get so her done. So you were in the banking industry mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at a time yeah. when it was yes. really heavily dominated by men. Yes. It Talk was about how only. that shaped you. So what shaped me is getting my butt kicked in a in a family that was had some challenges. Mm-hmm. We'll just say it that way. A lot. And so I had, uh, I, I, I pr- processed, I think, even as a very little kid, there's something not right about this because I don't feel like a bad person. So this shouldn't be happening. Why is this happening? So that became a question is to answer that question, to try to process that. And then because of my independence, and determination to be a happy person. So it started there. So you grew up in an abusive household. Yes, it was, it was a, a not kind environment is mm. a nice way to say that. Mm. Can go bigger, but not today. Yeah. Do you know? And so anyway, um, and so, but my drive was to answer that question. Like, how could this happen to me? I felt like a pure little angel person. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I really did. Mm. And so anyway, um, I left home at 16. I was still in high school. And then began to um, survive at all costs. And so I worked in restaurants and nighttime and finished high school and all of that. And then I began to progressively get jobs that were a little bit better and a little bit better, like a receptionist at a company where every, all the men were dressed really nice and they were making money and so forth. And then I went to um, bec- find a job that found jobs for people because I thought, how noble would that be? And that was the start of my professional career. And there was a woman there who was married to, I I would say like life married, and so to um, Imperial Bank's largest depositor. So she was 35, master's degree, finance, all of that. I had barely a high school diploma. That's what makes this so remarkable Mm -hmm. looking back. And so what they, and she had two children and was divorced. So he told her about this opportunity at this bank. 
And so she, I was so happy for her. I couldn't even sleep all night. She came back after the interview and said, I didn't get it because uh, if they had to fire me for any reason, they could lose their biggest depositor. Mm. So she said, why don't you go? I went, I started laughing. I said, first of all, not only do I not have a master's degree, I never stepped on a college campus. I barely got out of high school because I was in the survival mode thing, right? She went, but just call him and try. And I said, I'm not walking into a big no, is how it started. And God bless this woman forever. Her name was Susan Steele, and she, which was my grandma's name, Steele. So I thought she's talking through her. And so she, um, she insisted, I call this man. And when I called him and said, I'm Daryl Dennis, and I'm calling about the position I heard about in marketing for your bank. First question, how old are you? And I said, I'm 21 years old. And he went, absolutely not. And something kicked in. This is the part I love about the Quantum Living book. We all have a destiny like we all have individual fingerprints, and it's real. I had a destiny that brings us to this point that had to start there because now I'm in the higher function of uh, banking. That's the presidents of companies to see how all kinds of companies are working and all that. So anyway, he went, absolutely not. And I went, Mr. Waters. It would be to your advantage to meet me because I'm not your everyday 21-year-old. What is your schedule? Thursday at 8. He went, well, okay. I mean, it was so wild, right? And then some real kind of silly little kid stuff happened. I met him. He went, well, we're still looking. But I was determined. I had a sense in my soul. If I can make this work, my life just changed, and that's okay with me. Wow. And so, um, so I called him again and again and again. I looked in the window of the bank where I'll be working and went and saw where my desk would be and wondered if you were manifesting was made your decision. I was determined. And then he, and he, so he stuttered. I don't know. We haven't decided yet, but anyway, he finally went fine. He told me later that, um, I couldn't say no to you anymore. So of course I do, but I'm not paying you the whole 600 a month. That's how I got on TV. I badgered my news director oh, so yes. much that finally I think he was sick of yeah. me coming in as an intern and he's like, fine, just somebody put her on TV. See, that's a seminar, <laughs> the power of badgering, right? We should do a seminar on but that. But you excelled in that position. Yeah. You excelled yeah. in, in a world that you were surrounded by men yes. and you could yes. have sat and second guessed yourself because you yes. hadn't gone to this mm -hmm. elite, you know, schooling mm -hmm. None of this, none, none. but you found a lot of self-confidence. Yes. So how did that help propel you mm. to where you are today? So this, the, the president of the bank was named George Grazadio. And Mr. Grazadio was, they weren't bankers. They were builders of shopping centers. And they looked at a bank as a business, not as a digni dignified occupation, as they all did at that time, all men. And they went, no, we get salespeople. They didn't have salespeople in banking ever at that point. And so, and then they hired women because what were women good at? Shopping. So we'll put them women in charge of the um, Bank AmeriCard MasterCard merchant program because they're used to going in stores and using it. I mean, it's so <laughs> brilliant, right? So I started that way, but I'm looking at the guys because there were a few women, but I'm looking at the men because we were paid commission on how much money we brought in. And so the guys were going to bigger companies and all that. And they're saying the same thing I'm saying, bank this way. So I was watching them and thought, I could do that. So I'll go to an insurance company where I was a receptionist, do you know, for this very person, but they never saw me. I thought, I'll go in there. I know Manny Golden on Ventura Boulevard in Sherman Oaks. <laughs> I'll go to see Manny Golden. But I was so scared, the first one. This changed me. This moment changed me. So when you make the effort to excel in the potential that you have, and you have to go and it's scary, go. It's my only thing I'm going to say about this. Because I walked into the office. I opened the door. The receptionist was there. And I went, you don't want to... Um, get Mr. Golden for me, right? Because he's not here, right? And she went, no, actually he is here. <laughs> so I froze deer in the headlights. <laughs> and then she went, well, did you want me to get him? I'm like, okay. So he comes out and 
he said, how can I help you? He's annoyed because no appointment. And I went, you don't want to move your money to Imperial Bank, do you? He went, no, I don't. I went, I didn't think so. <laughs> and I ran to the elevator, got in my car, I was shaking. I couldn't drive. I was dizzy. And then I had the biggest aha of my life, which was, he said no, and I'm not dead. I mean, it actually was emotional. I'm actually still alive. I can do this. So I became the cold call queen. And then I found out people were actually very nice. I was interested in them as people. And this is what made all the difference in the banking because the banking, um, the, it was more of like a, um, an elite group. Well, I can't be elite. I'm not elite. Do you know what I mean? I'm a regular person, so I can't compete with elite. So I didn't go down the elite path. Yeah. Okay, so what? who am I? What am I good at? I'm fascinated by the dynamics of the human being. So I asked everyone I walked in on, so how did you pick this profession? Kind of like you, interested in backgrounds, right? And then I heard all these great stories. And then I became like impassioned because I was so welcomed by then. So to fast forward to the end of the story is that in five and a half months, not a whole year, still 21 in a girl body, upsetting everybody. Um, I finished three, third out of 125 people in production. Millions of people were, uh, money was coming in. Millions of dollars were coming in. What you're talking about here is you were always paying attention to the human experience. Yes. And that's what you're applying to the yes. principles you're teaching yes. and writing about today. Yes. What does your next chapter look like? I love your next chapter. I love that title. That's, I posted several about you. <laughs> next chapter, how perfect is that? We're all reinventing ourselves. And you know? everybody has the opportunity yes. to do so. Yes. So the next chapter has everything to do with this subject, quantum living, everything. Moving at the speed of life, what does that mean? And, and because if everyone has the potential, because it's a frequency to be in love, then everyone has the potential to be a genius. Everyone has the potential to be creative and loving and in harmony and all kinds of wonderful attributes that the human being is designed to have. The caveat that is an important one, is we simply must retire negativity and judgment as a source of decision-making. Because in the big picture of God, the universe, and everything, everything that's happening has a purpose. And there is a purpose that's unfolding. Have you ever had a situation that came about that was bad? And you told everybody, I did, I'd have. And that's really bad. And you, and then you convinced everybody that that was bad. And then they felt sorry for me. And so that was real negative. That's negative frequency when you think about it. I'm passing on some gossip, for example. And then three weeks, a month, two, six or more would go by. And some enormous door would open that was so perfect for my life. And I would, and you realize in the moment, because you're now operating intuitively in that instant, you go, oh my gosh, if that other thing didn't happen, this would have never opened. So maybe that other thing wasn't bad after all. That is the issue, the core that I want to convey to everyone. Because the moment you stop judging, and you're going to love Margie when she comes yes. in, because her she stopped that one thing, and her world opened up. I've known her since we're 24. We were roomies and stuff, and everything changes that fast when you change your frequencies. Because see, that's the key message to everything that everybody's doing: is what is the energy we're emitting? Are we emitting life is bad? And are, you know, we all know, you know, I have a lot of girlfriends that were married and divorced that say, I'd love to get married again, but they're sending out a frequency that says, no, I'm not. Mm. No, I don't. How do, do we see? use intuition mm -hmm. to get us where we want to go in life? Oh, see, the best question of all, intuition. Do you know why intuition is so great? Intuition is... Like our fingerprints, there's not one other human on planet Earth that has our same fingerprints, not one. Intuition is, is for us as individuals, for our destiny, our future, our moment in time. And it is of such high intelligence that the moment you get the intuitive hit that you have in this moment, it's connected to the future. So then the key with intuition is once you get an intuitive hit is to listen. Because the difference between the rational mind 
which is all about, well, let me ponder this. And, and when you think about something, you're pulling up files from the past. I don't know about you, but looking outside, there's nothing happening that's ever happened before, especially now, do you know? So there's no data. I'm sorry, I hit that. But there's no data um, that will be a benefit to this moment to decide. Now, the difference where people don't listen to intuition or their intuitive sense is because the the evidence comes after you listened mm. every time, every time. So you need some patience. Well, A, to get intuition in the first place, intuition is a high frequency. So if we're judging, complaining, blaming, gossiping, those kind of things that maybe seem to vent some energy for the moment, it doesn't serve the higher self at all. And actually, like a hose with water flowing, and you pinch it off. So if you pinch off the hose, you don't get the water. It's the same thing. We have this divine magnificence flowing through us at all times. When we judge another, we pinch it off. Mm. So how you to use your intuition is to start by allowing it to wake up, be unpinched. Right. Is that the one I want you to leave people with your one takeaway message? How do how do they how would they start the journey? I mean, they, they can definitely go and check out your book, yes. go to your website, yes. and you do so much beautiful coaching yes. with people oh, all over you. the world. I know you have fans um, yeah, all, all over India and yeah, in, in and Germany. London and, and yeah, Germany I know. And, I'm excited. And, but what would yes. be the one thing if I said to you, you know, this audience wants to hear where do I start? What would be your one recommendation? Stop judging. And you can do that. We judge all the time. We go in a restaurant, the food doesn't come on time. We get mad at the waiter or waitress and all of that is to stop for a moment and go, this is, you know, everyone's doing the best they can. Everyone is doing, I say that all the time. Everyone's doing the best they can. If someone doesn't meet up to my standards, whatever the heck that means, so what? They're doing the best they can. That's how it, someone cuts you off in traffic or something going, I make up stories to not judge. Oh, he's probably rushing to the hospital because his daughter got hurt at school. Oh, I hope he gets there <laughs> so safe in and your she's mind, okay. You're thinking, yeah, that's you, actually a good you point. You transform everything into what's the positive point. And then probably I would say that if I could share this one thing with you, is that it's a quote by uh, a man named Pierre de Chardin. In 1955, he was a Franciscan monk. Franciscan monk, I think they call it. And so this was his quote, because this is the essence of what quantum living is about in one quote. His quote was, or is, um, someday after we have mastered the winds, the waves, the tides and gravity, we shall harness the energies of love. And then for the second time in the history of the world, man will have discovered fire. Quantum living, moving at the speed of life, is a guide on how to harness the energies of love. And then everything happens almost, you know, mystically is the only word I could use because things come out of the blue. You could never, I never saw it coming that way. And that makes you emotional even saying that. Is that the power of your work? I am, because of the, my upbringing, my beginnings, so here's what I have subsequently realized about all of that. It's very powerful. I did in India, by the way, is that I was taking courses there and I was, they do a meditation before every course and it's oneness university. And so this one teacher, she, we had a, um, she said, we're going to take a break. We come back, we're going to do a meditation to forgive our parents. And so after people left, I walked up to her and I went, I'm not doing that. And she said, why not? And I told one little story and said, time's up by a trillion if you like, but this is why. Here's what she said and changed everything. And this is the book was now written because of my letting go of all this judgment I held in my whole childhood. Is she said, every time there's a meditation in any class for you specifically, do this one prayer. Ask divine why you chose the family you were born in. That's all. And so she, and then she looked me dead in the face and said, let's finish this now. Meaning I didn't know what she meant at the time, but let, enough suffering on this. So I did that for three days and the class, the courses were like five weeks. 
But I did that for three days. And on the fourth morning, I woke up and had this enormous realization, like a, like a voice speaking to me, if you will, that said, there's going to be a moment in time when every single event that has happened in your life without one exception will be preparation for your destiny. And in that moment, I realized I'm being prepared, not punished. See, right there. So I started to realize that all my suffering is because of my perception of what happened was limited. Well, that was painful, therefore I'm being punished is not true. We're being prepared for a destiny. And if we were ever going to fulfill our destiny, now is a really good time to get started. And so the, the absence of judgment, an enormous energy released my body. I felt the darkness of my own judgment coming out of my bones because you're pretty, you know, three and four and five and all that. Your bones are pretty soft. So all that energy was getting a bit, it mm-hmm. all came out. That part felt painful, but it did. Did you forgive your parents? Well, that's what was interesting about that is I had instant freedom. So it wasn't about forgiving. It was about saying, it's okay, I understand, because that's a forgiving thing. For me, it was stopping judgment of them, because they were fulfilling a function for my preparation for my destiny, which is right now, which is quantum living, moving at the speed of life, because now I see all people are suffering self-inflicted. I did that. And if I can do anything until my last breath, I'm talking 24-7, I am on the case of this to help people to understand there's reasons why everything's happening and it's for their growth. Ultimately is to get become more one with God. That's always the goal. We can't get close with God when we're judging and saying he blew it on this one. He's perfect in all areas, but he really blew it on my parents. You know, That's a judgment that's not true. Everything is perfect so that we fulfill our destiny. What could be a greater way to be alive than to fulfill your destiny? I can't think of one. I love the work you're doing and how much it means to you. you. That's really inspiring. Thank you. And the fact that you're working round the clock to bring this message to people in hopes that they can learn to vibrate at a higher level and bring more peace to their lives. Because thank goodness, wait till you hear Margie's story. I love it. It's a it's a it's the miracle of all time. And people have it in their in their work. They have it in their life, in their families. I mean, things are happening so fast that my prayer now is to get a a vaster, wider exposure, which is why I'm so grateful for you, Carrie. You have this wonderful platform at the perfect time because people are reinventing themselves. Mm. It is the next chapter. So I went from a corporate person my whole life and did really well working with companies and groups and stuff to... uh, now just me, what do I do now with that? <laughs> well, it seems like you're doing a lot. And where can people find out more I, information? I think I need to have a chat with Carrie Pena now, right? <laughs> yeah, so um, so my website is quantumleadership.group. I'm interested in coaching people to become quantum leader coaches. You know, I mean, quantum group coaches, quantum leap coaches, I'm sorry, quantum leap coaches, because that's important that people... I, people can do this. Yeah. You know, it's not, it, it's what's inside of the, everything we've talked about is inside of everyone. Einstein said, my favorite thing is he said, the spirit that moves the universe is the same spirit that moves our soul. Does that sound little to you when people think they're little with no power? Think again. Love it. That's a yeah. perfect place yes, to end is. on inspiration. Thank you. Thank Darryl. you for making me cry. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> being vulnerable and for sharing your story. Yeah, I appreciate you. you. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for watching and listening. This is the next chapter. I'm Carrie Pena. <laughs>